guys, Lisa here. Thanks for joining me in the kitchen. A couple of days ago, I shared with you how to can chicken in strips so you could use it for casseroles and things of this nature. That's when you don't want your chicken to come out shredded. I also shared with you a pantry staple that I keep on hand called the Super Sauce Mix. Uh, it is for making your own cream of mushroom, cream of potato, cream of whatever soup. So today I want, I want to show you how to use the chicken and the cream of soup mix. Now the recipe for the SOS or the soup mix says to use a chicken bouillon, but I prefer not to do that because I'm using my own chicken and I'm using the broth that the chicken made. So to start, it's, it, it, the, in, the uh, directions are one and a quarter cups of water and you want that water cold. So since I'm using chicken broth, it is cold. Well, it's not cold, it's just not hot. Okay, so a little bit more. Okay, and we're going to use the rest of that in just a minute. Let me get this mixed up and out of the way. And you want a third cup of the mix. Okay, so that gave me one third mix to one and a quarter cups of water, and I'm just going to go ahead and put a few additional spices. There are a couple of spices in this. I use an Italian seasoning mix. However, I'm going to add just a little bit more basil, probably about a teaspoon. And I'm going to add just a touch more of oregano. And these are dried from my garden. So if you're using fresh, they're going to be more flavorful. They're, they're just going to be stronger, so you wouldn't want to use as much. And I want to use about a teaspoon of pepper. And any of these ingredients, if you don't care for that spice, you can just leave it out. And I'm going to use, I don't put any salt in either my, I didn't in the chicken, and it's not in my cream of soup mix. So I'm going to add about half of a tablespoon. I'm going to start by adding one garlic clove. Well, this is an elephant garlic. It's a very mild garlic to where you can almost eat it plain. So I'm going to use a whole clove of it. It's rather large. If you were using regular garlic, I would say three cloves of garlic. Oh, and I meant to get out an onion. Let me grab an onion. I'm going to start, and I'm going to put about two tablespoons of butter in my skillet. And I'm going to add my garlic and some cut up onion to that. And just kind of heat it just until it is just fairly translucent. I just want it to start releasing some of the flavors that are in there. So I'm going to use about half of an onion. I'm not going to use the whole thing. This is a rather large onion. And this is going to cook down, so I want them in kind of a little bit bigger pieces. Okay, we're just going to add that to the skillet. And this garlic, you can actually leave it in larger bites because it's such a mild garlic. And I like to be able, I love garlic, so I like to be able to bite down and actually taste that little chunk of garlic. Okay, let's get that in the skillet. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on, and I'm just going to turn it on kind of a low medium um, to allow that butter to start melting and the flavors to start releasing from the onion and garlic. Now, I'm going to add a half of a green pepper, one I already had on hand in the refrigerator. And if you're working with green peppers, you do want to take that membrane out because it tends to be a little on the bitter side. The green ones do. The red and yellow and the orange are fine, but the green ones just seem to have that little bitter taste to them. And normally I would get out my Ninja Chopper, but since I just have a few items here, we're just going to do it by hand. Okay, I went ahead earlier and I made um, a homemade crust. And I've already lined my pie pan over there. 
if you need a recipe for pie crust, I will put a link to it in, on the i card up in the video on the right hand side. Uh, it's just a really easy pie crust. You can make it with your food processor or you can make it by hand. With a food processor, you can probably have it done in 10 minutes, and that's including weighing out your ingredients. The only thing is you want your ingredients to be cold, so if you kind of know that you're going to make a pie crust that morning, just grab you a couple of sticks of butter and dice them up into small dices, and then pop them back in the refrigerator so the little chunks of butter can be getting cold. You don't want it to be room temperature. And I put my, I use vinegar in my pie crust recipe, and then it takes a little bit of water. So you want the water and the vinegar to be cold also. That really does help give you a nice pie crust. Once my garlic and my onions have started softening up and become translucent, at that time I'm gonna need to add some liquid in there because my potatoes have not been cooked. And I'm gonna need to cook those potatoes. So since everything else has been cooked, I'm gonna keep those potatoes small, in a small bite, because basically all I want to do is just really heat them up. They're going to cook again in the oven. My peppers are ready. You don't have to add peppers if you don't care for peppers or whatever kind of pepper you like. You can actually even add a, a mild jalapeno or a hot jalapeno. If it's cooking, if you cook a hot pepper, it's going to substantially reduce the heat in it. Okay, I've already washed my potatoes, and I'm just going to peel them with my knife here. Okay, guys, this is, they are translucent. They could actually go a little bit more translucent, but I'm fine with them the way they are. Now I want to add in the rest of my ingredients. I've just cubed my chicken, and the potatoes are in here with it, and the cut-up bell peppers. So we're just going to pour that all in. I'm actually adding the remainder juice that was in the uh, jar of chicken. And I'm going to let this just kind of cook down for a little bit just to soften up those potatoes a little more. And I'm not adding any spices right now because all of the spices are in my soup mix. I'm going to turn it up just to medium. I'm going to let it go probably for about 15 minutes and then I'm gonna add my cream of chicken soup. It's been about 10 minutes. Now I've drained the carrots. These were some that I had canned and I'm just adding those. So I just wanted to give those potatoes a head start to soften a little bit. The liquid, the only liquid that is in here is I had taken out of that quart jar of chicken. I had taken out one and a quarter cups of the room temp broth to mix the soup up, the cream of chicken soup mix. And what was left in the jar was about a cup of liquid. So that's all that I've got in here is one cup of liquid. Now if I were doing, if my carrots had not been done, I would have sliced them or diced them and actually popped them in the microwave. I would have put them in a bowl with a, just a little bit of water in the bottom and I would have put them in the microwave to soften them for about a minute and a half because that's the longest ingredient that needs to cook down the most or is the carrots. And, and I kind of like crunchy carrots, but most people prefer their carrots in their chicken pot pie to be soft. At this point, I'm gonna add my cream of chicken soup. Now I want to cook this down just until the cornstarch in the cream of chicken soup has time to start thickening my broth. I don't want a really soupy broth in my pot pie. So it's probably going to be about another maybe 10 minutes. Okay, I had canned up some mushrooms not long back. If I wanted cream of mushroom soup, I would have just rendered the liquid from here got a quarter, one and a quarter cups of the mushroom broth and added the soup mix to it. But since I'm not making a cream of mushroom, it's more of a cream of chicken, I do want to add the mushroom, so I'm going to drain this mushroom juice. Oh, 
Okay, so I'm now that I've added the mushrooms, I'm going to say it's going to need, I don't want it too liquidy, but I don't want it too thick because it's going to thicken as it is once it bakes. So I'm probably going to give it about another six or seven minutes. And then I'll show you what it looks like before it goes into the pie shell. Okay. See, it's not extremely thick, but it doesn't look like water anymore. The cornstarch is finally starting to come together, bring everything together, and thicken up a little bit. So I'm fine with the way it is. It has been about 15 minutes total. I'm going to remove it from the stove and let it cool down just a little bit. I let it cool down just a little bit because it wasn't really quite ready for it to go in the oven. Now I've got my pie crust, the bottom end, and I'm just going to take a fork and put some, just some little air vent holes in the bottom. Got my top crust ready. And I may have, a, as usual, a little bit more pie filling than what my pie calls for, but that's okay. I'd rather have a little bit too much than not enough. And I wanna make sure that I drain any of the rest of the liquid so I can be sure and use it. And this one is uh, chicken pot pie is kind of unlike an apple pie or a peach pie where you want it to be kind of making a little mound because the fruit cooks down. This is a little bit different than that. You actually want it just even with the top of the pie. I didn't have too, not hardly anything left over. Okay, and I just got it on the aligned cookie sheet because I hate it when things spill over and then I'm left with a mess in my pan and take my pie crust and we are making the rustic pie crust you know what that means that means my pie crust isn't going to look perfect that's good for me but at least that way you know it's homemade and all I'm going to do here is kind of Lift these edges and tuck it under. If you have too much in one area, you can just go in and pinch a little off. If you need to add some to another spot. Okay. Yeah, it looks a little thick there. Let's take it a little bit off. And you can always use a fork to press down the edges if you want to do that. Or you can do like me and do the best you can and just call it rustic. Too bad I can't call my cakes rustic because I sure do not know how to decorate a cake. I can bake them, just can't decorate them with that icing. I want my pan sticking to that. Just take off a little bit there. And get it all the way around. Okay. I'm just going to go in and Just kind of bend those edges, just ever so slightly. Okay, that's it. Now I want to add a couple of vent holes across the top to allow this, this steam to escape. There we go. Okay, I got a pie shield just in case the edges start getting 
darker than before the middle of it does. So if you find that your pie starts to do that and it seems like the edges are done, you can actually take you a piece of, a couple of strips of aluminum foil and just kind of wrap them around it. This, I just take my little tie shield and wrap it around there and it stores easy in the drawer, a little silicone thing. Okay, so we're gonna put it in the preheated oven on 350 and it's probably gonna take about 30 minutes. Okay guys, I left it in for 30 minutes. And it's, it's been sitting out for probably six or seven minutes, but it's still very, very hot. Ooh. All right, I can tell I'm gonna have to let it sit for another probably five minutes before I try to taste it. Ooh, it's still hot. I can see the steam coming up from it. Get me a little piece of chicken in there. Mmm. That's good. And to think, a few of your home canned items and you can have this going into the oven in 20-30 minutes max. Easy dinner, very easy dinner. Mm. Alright guys, so I hope this helps. And until next time, be blessed.